So I was taken to unknown place. I was uh, raped also from there. I was tortured from there. People who are torturing you will not see their faces. People who are torturing you will only hear the voice, but you will not see. Unless one time when I had to open my eyes, I had to see the uniform call. It was written, Chad. Chad. Yes. I arrest you and just leave you to be like that until you come back out. But they could use you. Doctors could use you. Uh, soldiers could use you. They torture me remain sex. When after that, they will even pour water there where you're going to sleep. <laughs> they can even remove all the clothes from you. They just leave you there. So when you try to make an alarm, the they, they doctor will just tell you, I'm going to spear you the, the whatever, the drugs are going to kill you. Which injected very many times. Where? Yeah. I was injected. They can even inject you in stomach. In the stomach? Guys, this is when they want information from me. I was, we were, after Chitalia, I was again kidnapped, serious to one now, you live about this one, so Chitalia, what, what, now, I was again kidnapped by, maybe you picked up at night when they come, and I was tortured, I was taken to unknown place, me, I saw Toba was in Yovan, Congo, I was just in Uganda, without knowing the love of my mom, without knowing the love of my dad, um, I only know the love of my grandmom and all that she left to me, to me. Until when the, there was no information, they had to take me back to Mitiana and just drop me there in Ch at Chitoko, something of that kind. They picked me in the morning. All people are there who know uh, what I went through and even I plucked off. I had plucked off, I didn't, could not remember anything. Because I've been sick for two months now. Mm. So I just feel like dizziness, what, all that. So when I fell sick, I really fell sick badly. And oxygen and oxygen. I cannot walk. I could not walk. You just carry me like a young kid. And even so when they tested me, they found that I had malaria, I had typhoid, I had. Uh, also serious one and then again they came there they have to find it and they found that i was hiv positive and i have i have to be with me and i had to continue with medication but the medication which i'm taking my dear brothers and sisters it is not really something easy you have to you have to eat too much I'm taking five drugs in the morning and in the evening I have to take two. And that's what TB in the morning and in the evening I have. I was just crying of is uh, I did not make my dreams to come there for real because I was having other dreams. But was that, what happened to me, I didn't understand. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Nze haji kabo goza umsomi wedua Ntereza ensonga za maka ABM funa ni indwa dezita tegiri kika Haji kabo goza umsomi wedua Nsingani wa echiti goma kure jinja Bopango utuse echiti goma mutau ni kusteji Osoboro kuba kunamba ze simwezo zola bazitambula Gwowe na alie wala o inzo kuita kumukutu wa fogwa whatsappu Kulai nyeyo ya MTN obudebo na mbe
Jenny. Sobola, Sorry, mommy. Adam, Ned, that we have a So cold from your cutting while we do. Stood good. I've been toiling at Sakubitam with the neck at the tons of it. Okay, a very good afternoon, good evening, depending on the country you're watching us from. Uh, today we are in another episode that we promised you a long time ago that will be in English version. I'm with uh, this very beautiful lady called Kapchi. Kapchemut Shamim. Kapchemut Shamim. Kapchemut. Kapchemut Shamim. Yes. Or Wabobi. Yes. Shamiwa Bobi. Shamiwa Bobi. Yes. The one who is known, uh, the one who was, to who was abducted, tortured, raped, did everything to her. And right now she is in a miserable life. What you're doing today here, I want to see how she can be helped to be in the normal situation like any other person that would wish we to be. Today it's our first program that it's in English version because we would wanted to those who can't understand our local language also to understand, uh, to go through the experience that what she went through. And the most important thing is that we want her to be helped by who? I don't know. It's by you and me who's watching this particular program. We want to help her to see how her life can you know, how we can shape it back in a normal situation. However, today, uh, though the story is a little bit sad, though the story is a little bit pain, but slow but sure, uh, we would ask God to help us, her to go through the communication that we get to receive. Secondly, we want also to understand what happened when she was in the jail. What happened when she joined the NOB? What went through? In that particular process. Shamim, she's a very intelligent lady who comes from Kapchora. Yes, Kapchora. It's a Bay lady. Yes. At the same time, she's a staunch Muslim who believed and who still believes that God can do 
something better than the way she's going through. People are watching us. I want you to stand with us to save her life. She was raped by, I don't know whether the UPDF or the police officials, but there were these guys with these gundi gundis. <laughs> After, when she was found collecting this man, is called Muda Muda. Yes. Muda Gua Bobby, in other words, Abakunga Nyango Mutualu Gua Bobby. If you say it, because she was, a, she was blessed by his excellence, Bob Wine, and she was among people authorized to go and collect her money. And then later, someone came. We did whatever they did to her. We are on untold story by other than Shamim. Kapchimutu? Shamim. Kapchimutu no, Shamim. No, Shamim Shamim Wabobi. Shamim Wabobi. You know that Shamim Wabobi? Because he's my president. Because he was your president. Yes. Okay, please. Uh, it is your time. Say hi to our viewers all over the country and especially for India Supra. We love you very much. And thank you very much for standing with us. Please kindly call us if you want to help her. Or we may have her number with her also at the same time to prevent she can easily be served, that she can be helped. You can call her either on 0759-915165 or you can call on yours. 0781-44-2400. Uh, 0, we want to find the way how we can help her. The truth be told, me, I didn't know, I knew these things, yes. And by the way, we should let the public know mm. that... Uh, we are not doing this mm. because we are against His Excellency, is this gentleman, you were to have no. Mr. President. No. We are not against We are you're trying to experience what you went through. Yes. You, you should have killed yourself, because. but now you want to express yourself. And this story is an educating story, helping those who have not gone through the same situation to avoid it. Yes. It's your time. Say hi to our viewers all over the globe. You are on the Flashlight Channel Uganda online television that is being watched all over the globe. Okay, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, people who are watching us all over the country. And um, the world at large. Uh, I'm by the names of Kapchamut Shamim, uh, known as Shamim Abobi. I'm from Kapchora, I'm a Sabine by tribe. Uh, today, uh, I will be hosted by um, my brother here, because he, knows, he knew the situation that I'm going through, so he had to bring me today here. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Really, we really thank God. We're not doing this because of what, you know, because of very beautiful that I had to put you in the camera. No, no. We, we want you to share your story to the world, yeah. to find the way, how can you be helped? Because I can't let you see rotting yeah. wherever you've been. And yeah. because me, I'm human, I'm human. I was yeah. once abducted, I was once beaten. Mm. I know what it means. And now when it came on your side, when they beat you, they raped you, they used you in all angles, and they affected I'm, you I'm with HIV. HIV. And now, Jesus Christ, save this country and save our people. Yeah. Go on. It's um, that story and sad story. Can, can I start when I came from the village or I just... Yeah, you, you'll be a little bit, you'll summarize how, how you came from Kapchora, then to Kampala, and now later mm. you ended up joining NOP, mm -hmm. and now from being a NOP member, you have all whatever happened, and then we shall conclude from there, because we're going to have different series. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you so much once again. Um, I'm Kapchemut Shamim. So... Uh, my life, the way I came up, it was really something not easy for me to reach this point where I am right now. Uh, as me, as me, Shamim, I grown up without having, without knowing the love of my mom, without knowing the love of my dad. Um, I only know the love of my grandmom and also she left me and that's so sad. May her so rest in peace. Uh, my dear sisters and brothers, I was born in 1997, I'm still a young girl. And I was born, that, like, I was born in 1997, then I lost my mom at the spot. I never breastfeed. I don't know anything concerning breastfeeding. So I remained with my dad. Then after I showed 
period of time, my dad also got someone that you could keep him to push on the life. So then uh, when my dad got that very woman, they were so loving, they were caring. Though I, was, I didn't know what was on earth, but they tried to see that I'm alive up to now with my grandma. So uh, my dad stayed with that lady, that very second lady, after my mom when she passed away. When Don't she was your passed stepmother? On, yeah. Okay. My mom, my real mom, stayed, I go, uh, died, and then my dad now got another new wife. Now when they were still enjoying that one, when my dad was, pre when my mom was pregnant, this second mom, over the stepmom, uh, even, even the father also passed away, he got an accident and he died. When he died in 2002, when I was still very young, uh, this lady that he left, that lady was, uh, she was pregnant of eight and a half months. She was almost giving birth. And for her, daddy died in um, May 6, and this lady produced in June 17. So when she produced, and for me also, I was still very young, staying with a grandma, this lady really got a very miserable life in that family. Like she was not now uh, caring herself like the way my dad used to, be, used to do to her. So what the lady had to do when the thing is all wrong goes around, you know, we want to learn, we want these things, we want this. Because I understand, I uh, was told by my grandmom, my dad had to, used to be having money, because even almost in the village, you know, we, there were these people who, even almost the first people to build uh, the Iron Sheets house. So, I was told my father had a lot of money as him because he wanted his family to go on uh, when we are healthy, but he did not make it. So I stay, we stayed just like that. This lady left this young brother of mine when he was nine months and he, he disapp she disappeared. She just went to their home. She, after her moving to their home, she went and got another man who is just there. They are still together up to now, but the life is not yet good on her side. Mm. So for me, when I was, we were still young, right? So the other one, the other baby was crawling. For me, I was, uh, I was born in 96. I was like having four, ma four years. Now, since I was having four years, I could go and fetch water, do a, a lot of things at home so that can make us to be uh, alive, me and my grandmom. So the grandmom also used to cry. I wish we, uh, Mr. Kasim, my dad was called Mr. Kasim. I wish Mr. Kasim did not die and left with the children with me. I'm not now having money. You know, my dad had a lot of dreams whereby he did not make it. So I stayed with the grandmom. Then I start now schooling, the time of schooling. For me, I started cooking when I was four, four to five years, when I knew how to peel, uh, mingling, you know, using firewood, you know, that smoke sometimes comes. Mm. You have noise, good closings. You, when it is Christmas time, you have to, uh, you have to just send you with a situation. Your grand, my grandma. Actually, I normally call. I used to call her mom, but. Because I want to know, I want people to know that she, she, she did something to me. So I want to make people to know that she was a grandmom. They may mistake in it as a mom. She was my grandmom. So the lady could just tell us, Shami, you'll be okay, my dear. Uh, you, you, your dreams will come to reality when you grow up. I was like, yes, because. I could respect big people. I, I still even respect big people up to right now. So the problem came as in, um, my grandmom could not manage to take care of us. We have to go and dig someone's garden to get what to eat, uh, to get uh, like maize. When we are tired of matoke, we get some maize, we grind using uh, the other grinding machine for fuel. Uh, by then we could use uh, f 
200. So even five, even three, even 2,000 was really hard for my grandmom to get, but we could go, you dig, they can give you a garden, you know, this issue of, they make for you a line, now you have to dig that one. Mm. So you have to dig, like evening time, like right now, you have to go and dig, then when it remains tomorrow morning, Come and you, finish it. You come and finish it yes. before you go to school. You have to first dig this one, then you go to school. Uh, we, we, are, we just struggle. Life goes on like that until uh, I also continue. I went to school. I went to school when I was st still young because of the situation that grandma was. Okay. Because we were just near the school. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, you, we are still on untold story with Shamim, uh, who known as Shami, Shami Mwabobi, uh, who was kidnapped, being beaten and raped by those it's guys it. with these guns. I want, don't answer with the, but with these goons, you know? mm. So, and when she was in prison in Chitalia, and now we really thank God that you came out of the prison, but it's unfortunate that uh, the end results were all that negative. So now, when you left, Chit when you left uh, uh, Kapchora, mm. now you are in Kampala, mm. because, uh, you know, because, you know, what, what, sorry people, don't think that I'm interjecting her. Huh? What I want is that, uh, she has key points that people may understand. Yes. And uh, sometimes you say, no, you don't have that and things of that kind. So, sorry if, uh, if you feel that I've interjected there. Yeah. But we're going to have this series. We're going to have this series. Yeah. So now you left Kampala. You left Kapchora to Kampala. How did you come to Kampala? I'll be leaving Kampala after my senior four. After I've struggled and reached senior four. Hmm. Uh, reaching, coming to Kampala, one day we uh, they, uh, my one of our neighbors had lost the, their son. Okay. So when one of her, the, when one of his sisters of the late came mm. to the village for the burial, mm. then this lady maybe had her business in Kampala, okay. this side in Michana district. When that lady came and reached in the village, she was like, she told the, the, the sister that, ah, Sister Amina, may I want to get someone who is going to work for me. Okay. And uh, maybe the lady, the other sister of hers was like, no, we have, a, we have a girl here who can work. She's a really respective woman. They're talking about you. Yeah, they, okay. they were talking about me. Hmm. So that lady, after the burial goes on well, they stayed. Then the lady had to approach my grandmom. When the lady approached my grandmom, the lady was like, "No, uh, I want to talk to you, grandmom and Ishami." So we laid the 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 mat down. We had to love, you know, hey, signs of kulaba, you know, all those things. So from there, this lady was like, "Ah, Jaja, grandma, I've come to see you. I want to talk to you and your grandchild." Uh, when the lady narrated the story, I have my business, I am looking for someone to go and work, you know. So, with this miserable life that I was in, her grandmom had to tell the lady that I'm giving you my daughter, but you have to take care of her. So, when this lady, when my grandmom accepted, me, I did not accept immediately. I had to first wait and until my heart says, show me, you can now make it. So when I refused, my grandma was like crying, show me, you see, you could have gone and do some money, work for yourself so that you join a level. I was like, okay, grandma, I took some time to to, to accept the thing. And another thing is that this lady gave us the number, although we, have, we were not having a phone number, but we were, we were have, okay, we, although we were not having the phones, but he, she just wrote for us the, the number somewhere. You know, village life, you have to keep something very safe when you want to when you want to reach where you want to be. So we kept the number. When, that very day when I accepted, my grandmom had to look for someone who is having a phone to, to call this lady in Kampala. The, the Farida Amina? The Farida. The Farida, OK. 
Okay. Yes. When they called Farida, Farida wasn't a bad person by then. She she was like, fine, there's, there's no problem there. Then she can travel even at night. So I had to pack my, my clothing, my hijabs and my veils. Um, plus some of my things, as you know, we are ladies, you know. So uh, when I, when I, that very time I came to Kampala willing, knowing that I was going to be uh, in good life or my future was going to be fine. To but be bright. To be bright, like the way I wanted it to be. But in all that, I did not make it the way to, I wanted it to be. So when we reached in Kampala at Inakawa in the morning, so they had to take me up to um, park, uh, Old Park, going to Mitiana. When we reached in Mitiana, we, they first called the lady. The lady was like, I'm going to be at the park side. You just come. So when you reach at Mitiana, this lady was already there, and she was really very happy to see me. When I reached there, I stayed, uh, I was welcomed and I was well off taken, as in uh, having uh, breakfast, at after, okay, afternoon, lunch, and even evening tea. So this lady was not have, showing me any bad heart. I stayed for three good days. When I finished three days, I had to ask this lady that, the job you called me for. Now I think it is the time for you to call to, to take me for the job. When this lady when I asked the lady, the lady was like, Okay, we shall see in the morning, tomorrow morning. So it did not even take long to to get the another day. When it was already in the morning, now that is another day, this lady was like, Shall me take shower? I took shower. Um after me taking shower, I had to veil myself and I had to put on my hijab because for me, I had I believed in my uh, my religion. So this lady was like, "No, don't put on those things. I don't like them. Put on something that all the knees and everything, my thighs, are supposed to be outside." I was like, "No, I'm Just used hold to." On. Mm. Uh, this Farida, the one who I should I should call it seducing, mm. seduce you from. Kapchora come to, mm. to Kampala, when mm. we reached at her place, she told you, do not dress decently, in yes, other words. Yes. She wanted your thighs out, yes. your knees out, so mm. in other words, meaning, equally, not a prostitute, mm. but a big quarterly, halfway naked. Yes. Okay. So, I denied, and then she was like, fine, and then, uh, by that time, we walked away from home, not a long distance, just a short, dis short distance from where she used to be. Um, but by then, before doing anything, this lady used to come back night hours, like uh, at around three, sometimes four. So I was just cautioning myself, where does this lady stay up to this time, when people are asleep and they're almost waking up. Mm. So I just kept quiet. You know, when you're in someone's uh, hands, you know, you should not show up your emotions. So I had to keep quiet. So that very day when we went to, when Bush was taking me for the job she called me for, we went up to a certain center. Uh, she told me, here we are, we have come now, we have now reached where we were coming to. Uh, she opened the door. Me, I'll, I didn't know what is going on. When she opened the door, I find that beers were inside. Oh. Yeah, local beers, uh, local booze, and this, uh, I don't know how to call them. So when I find that those are the things I had to first keep quiet for her to explain to me or to show me that what should I do exactly there. Then she was like, show me. I'm so sorry. I told your grandma that I was calling you for a job for the shop, but this is the job I was calling you for. So I was so excited and I was like, okay, there's no problem. Let me add, because I wanted to show up that I'm not annoyed and I didn't want to show her that I've not, dis I've not disliked this job, but mm. I had to just calm, calm down. So. 
uh, by that time she showed me everything she removed the book start writing uh, when you sell guineas you have to do this when you sell ego i don't know and so on you have to do write down and even the amount sometimes when you don't know the um, when you don't know the amount, you have to go and say, hello, auntie, I don't know the amount ne of that this That was hers? Yeah, it was hers. Oh, okay. Okay, like, uh, we worked that very day. The second day, I went there, I worked. <laughs> it wasn't it's something good, easy for me. I worked. Then there is a man who came in and was like, hey, go on the Farida, you've brought for us uh, another girl. Uh, let me now, let me now continue boozing here as I'm waiting for her. Maybe they were speaking in local language. By then I didn't know Uganda, I didn't know anything. Uh, this man maybe went outside and started boozing with, my, with that lady. And the lady was like, I've given you that girl, you just buy me beers and later on you'll go with the girl. That is the lady... Yeah, the, that Farida. Mm. She told the man, "You yeah. just buy for me some beers. Maybe later in late night, mm, you will go, go with the with girl." Her. So, oh. I didn't know anything concerning over uh, this man was going to go with me for real. But I just came to realize this when the man was going away. So when the man left the place, he left the place while arguing, quarreling. Caroling with Farida. Yes, in English now, so that for me I can understand. Because by the for the first time I didn't know that they were talking about that. Because they were talking in local language and that's Luganda. By then I didn't know Luganda. So when I came to realize that, I had to just sat down somewhere in a quiet place and shed tears. When I shed tears, I was like, it's okay. Let me cool down and let me just continue doing what I was doing. Uh, the Saturday, the Saturday uh, I worked and things did not go well on my side because issues of alcohol, I didn't know anything of alcohol, what. So uh, well, I worked that very day, the Saturday, the fourth day I did not re come to, uh, to work on her home place, okay, on her bar. I refused to come and work, to go back and work with her. The lady had to chase me away. I didn't know where I was. I had no money, very hungry. I'm really totally green. I don't know where I am. So the lady had to chase me away and I had to food. There is a long distance from where I'm talking, Mitiana and Ibujuko. It is really something, it is a long distance. So until I meet a certain man, who even didn't know me, he didn't know anything concerning my side, even the language, even the English that I used to speak, that man didn't know anything. So this man is a taxi driver. I hope those ones who will watch this thing uh, over these videos may even go and tell him that your daughter is there, he has done some videos but you here. Okay, who, what, what was the name of that gentleman? That gentleman is called Haji Haruna. Okay, the Haji one who Haruna. saved you when he found you walking on the street. Yes. Of, right, you mean that you walked from Mitiana to Bujuko? Yes, I walked, I walked from Mitiana to Bujuko. When I walked I mean, from Mitiana to Bujuko, I had no money. I had nothing I've eaten. I had nothing completely that I'd eaten. So I was really very hungry, very thirsty. I have nothing. Even my slippers were done. Uh, you the, mean you, were, you used, you had the slippers, you had the sandals? Yeah, I had, uh, yeah, Just sandal. blue sandals. Blue sandals. Yes. That the one when she thrown th your clothes out and she didn't give you anything like a transportation? Nothing. Because even you didn't know anyone from Mitiana? Yes. That was after three days, as you after, said? After, yeah, after three days. Okay. So, uh, when uh, when I was chased like that, I had to just uh, follow the the callers. I was like, maybe you may know, never now may reach home. So this man.